Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I was going to kind of walk you through my tanning routine and also give you some tips and tricks for fake tanning. I have been tanning since I was about 15. Um, I got in kind of young, so um, through the years I've just kind of maybe mastered it a little bit. I guess I started whenever it was like homecomings and things like that. I think like my sophomore year, maybe even freshman year. I think it was freshman year. I um, asked my mom, I was like, mom, can I get a fake tan? And she was like, yeah, she was like, where are you gonna go? So she ended up taking me to um, this lady um, in the town next to me and you would just strip down naked and she would spray you. I was very modest and I just didn't know what that was like. I mean, I'm like, I guess if it's freshman year, I was like 14 years old. So having this woman just spray me down was a little weird. But um, not only that, that night for dinner, we went to like a hibachi place or something. And I guess they do like the little like, they do the train, then they do like catch the egg. Well, then he starts taking like the sake or whatever it is and starts like throwing it on us. So somehow like liquid something was like being sprayed onto us. And I looked down and I have like dots all over me. And I was like, mom, is this gonna blend? Like what is happening? She was like, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Cause of course at this point, I still hadn't washed it off yet. So I was like, there's, there's hope. So then that night, I'm like kind of a bad drooler. I feel like I've gotten better. I woke up and like all of this right here is like white. So now I have dots all over me. This right here is white and that night is homecoming. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go get in the shower. Like this will all, this will all be good. It was not all good. And my strapless dress showed all of my dots and you could see where I tried to fix the whiteness right here with makeup, but it just didn't work. Then, once I was in college, um, I found out about Bondi Sand, which is what I've been using for forever. Um, it's an Australian tan, it's an Australian company, and um, it smells like coconuts, and it's a wonderful formula, it really is. It's kind of got more of a green tone to it, so especially if you have an olive skin complexion, um, it looks really, really natural. Um, but for this video, I ordered for the first time Loving Tan. I've been seeing so much about it. It's also an Australian company. Bless the Australians. Um, but I've been seeing so much of it, and so I just decided to give it a try. So I ordered it, and, um, this is it on. I think that it's such a wonderful formula. It's very similar to Bondi Sand, um, but I feel like the coloring's a little bit different, um, and I feel like not as much washes off. So I'll get into all of that, um, but I guess we'll just kind of jump in and kind of explain um, the routine of it and just some nice tips and tricks. So before anything, um, well, first of all, I ordered Loving Tan from Ulta before I think that you used to have to order it straight from Australia. That's what I used to have to do with Bondi Sand and it would take like two to three weeks. So thank goodness that Ulta picked up Loving Tan. So I ordered it from there along with a um, mitt applicator. And mitt applicators, fake tanning mitt applicators, you really want to look at reviews on them. I've had some before in the past that shed. So like as I was putting on the fake tan, like all the little bristles of the mitt were falling off onto me and I was like, what the heck? So I had to like completely wash that off. And so that was such a mess. So you definitely want to make sure that the tanning mitt that you get has a good review. Um, I used just the Ulta brand one and it worked great. So I recommend that one. And then I know that like the Loving Tan mitt is really popular, but um, the Ulta one was like $10 cheaper. So I'm always down for a bargain. Um, so the first thing you wanna do, of course, order your tan in your mitt, and then um, you're gonna wanna shower. So in the shower, the first thing that you wanna do um, is body wash yourself 
and then you want to the biggest I think the most important step of fake tanning is exfoliating so I use an exfoliator from Bath and Body Works but um, there's a ton of good ones like I always use the um, Lush cup of coffee that is a phenomenal exfoliator you just put it all over and you really want to make sure that you are like like really buffing your skin like really well like I really put some like backbone into it just because I want to make sure a that all of my dead skin is removed and b that any fake tanner that I had on before is completely gone or else you're going to have cakiness streaks like whatever else so after you've body washed and exfoliated you want to make sure that you shave because um, it may be a few days just because you're not showering for another six hours and then you don't want to shave once you wash off your fake tan so you want to make sure that you're nice and shaved um, before you fake tan and then a really really important step and I feel like this is personal preference I've kind of played around with it throughout the years <clears throat> but before you get out of the shower you want to run cold, like ice cold water over your skin. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna close up your pores. Now, I have been told in the past by some people that they prefer to run really hot water over their skin to open up the pores. When your pores are open, that fake tan is gonna go into your pores, and some people like that because it'll stay longer. Um, I do not like doing that. I prefer to run cold water and close cold water and close up my pores because I don't like how it looks with those like dots. So like I have no dots on my skin from where you can tell that the fake tanner went into my pores. Um, so I guess you just kind of have to pick your preference at that point. Once I get out of the shower, I dry myself off and apply lotion to a few areas. So I apply lotion heavily to my hands. I run them all throughout my fingers um, and my wrist area. Then I apply it to my elbows and then I apply it to my knees. Um, oh, and also your feet and ankle area. These parts of your body are super, super dry so the tan is gonna stick extra strong to those spots. So by applying a lotion, it just helps it not stick as much to where it's just abnormally dark. Um, and it makes it look more natural once you apply it on. I use the Cetaphil. It's just a very basic, clean um, lotion. So that's the one that I use to kind of prep my skin. So once you've applied that lotion to your dry areas, you'll want to grab a Ziploc. And I know this sounds so weird. This is something I started doing when I was using Bondi Sand. Um, the first time I used Bondi Sand, after I had rubbed everything on me, my hands were covered in fake tanner. And that's a, like, I mean, it's gonna last. So like my hand, the inside of my hands were completely covered with fake tan and it was all blotchy and it looked really bad. So I was like, what can I do to prevent that? So I grabbed a Ziploc um, and I used that as a protective layer inside of the mitt. So weird, but it works. I take a Ziploc first and I put my hand in the Ziploc and then I stick my Ziploc hand into the applicator mitt and I use that to rub the uh, tanning mousse around. So once I've got my Ziploc and my mitt, I squirt the foam on there. I usually do one to two pumps and then I just start applying in circular motions. Um, and I'll focus on like the main limbs so I won't worry about like hands, wrists, feet, neck, things like that because those you'll want to hold off for later. So I'll take the mitt and I just start to buff that all over me. Um, I started off with my hand there um, and I wore a swimsuit just for video purposes, but you'll want to do it um, without anything on. And so at this point I took off my swimsuit and I did my full body, everything from my, I did my arms, my chest, my stomach, my legs. The back gets a little complicated. Um, when I lived at home with my parents, I could like call my mom in there to do my back. Sometimes, you know, at this like, when I was doing this video yesterday, I just kind of did like a nice little like reach around, just kind of like got to where I could, nobody's seen my back, so I don't really care. Um, <clears throat> 
So once your body is tanned, you can take the excess of your mitt and kind of rub that onto your hands. In between your fingers, you want to make sure that's really spread apart. You want to bend your knuckles to make sure that's getting inside the lines of your knuckles. Um, and then you'll want to apply it to your feet and um, you can rub some on your neck. But the way that I like to do my face and my neck is with a makeup brush. So I just used um, an e.l.f. Um, foundation brush <clears throat> and I made sure it was clean and I just squirted it a little bit onto the elf brush and then started blending that in like I would foundation onto my face and then also onto my neck and then any excess you can rub that into your hands but you want to really make sure that all of it's blended so you're going to want to make sure you cover your ears you want to get behind your ears down your neck you really want to use that brush to get into those areas that a mitt definitely could not. And then, again, this is personal preference. This is something that I do. So you have to think about your face and how much bigger your pores are on your face and the rest of your body. So that tan's going to stick twice as much. And it's going to become twice as darker just because it has larger pores to fill. And so it's really getting in there on your face. So just personal preference, I wait a minute or two for that tanning lotion to sink into my face. And then I take a Neutrogena makeup wipe and completely wipe it off. Um, and this is just because I don't want my skin to be so super dark. And I'm wearing makeup, so I don't know if you can tell right now, but I mean, it still stays even with wiping it off. And I also know a lot of people who don't even like to tan their face at all. So it's all personal preference, um, especially my nose. Like I really make sure that I really pretty much take all of the tan off of my nose because those are honestly the biggest pores on your whole entire body. And so I don't want a super dark nose. That is the tanning process. So then you'll want to wait at least six hours before washing it off. I waited quite a bit so I put on the tan yesterday afternoon maybe around like 3 or 4 and then I didn't wash it off until around 8 or 8.30 this morning so it really had time to sit on my skin and really develop really beautifully so um, it just depends on how long you want to wait but I would at least wait 6 hours for it to fully develop. Then when I woke up this morning and was nice and bronzed. I um, hopped into the shower and you'll really want to do nothing but rinse off your tan. So I was in there for maybe 30 seconds in the shower. You'll just want to make sure, just kind of rub off everything, make sure that the water's running clean. Like if it's still running brown, like you'll want to kind of maybe like stay in a little bit longer. The number one thing you want to do after you wash off your tan is put on a lotion. So you want to make sure that you're keeping your tan really hydrated so that it'll last longer. I used um, some Eyes by Australian Gold. This is Hemp Nation Moisturizing Tan Extender with hemp seed oil. So this is made to extend your tan. It doesn't have any alcohol or anything like that in it. Alcohol products, like if you, you if there's alcohol in your body wash or in your lotions, it is gonna fade your tan. So um, I use this one because A, it's a tan extender and B, it has zero alcohol. So I know that um, it's not gonna make my tan fade. So super moisturizing. This is also has a gradual tanner or like a bronzer in it. So I use this pretty much every day um, because it also has that, um, gradual tanner in it. Okay, so that was my loving tan fake, loving tan fake tanning routine tips and tricks. I hope you found it helpful and I hope that some of my tips and tricks, some of my mistakes, I hope some of my past mistakes will help you in your future tanning endeavors. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.